Do TV icons Jennifer Aniston and Steve Carell have good chemistry on screen so far? Now, how does the great Reese Witherspoon fit into that equation? Does this show tackle the Me Too movement properly? And more importantly, this show has already been greenlit for season two, and it has a pretty high price tag. Is it worth it? We're going to talk about that and much more. The Morning Show, an inside look at the lives of people who help America wake up in the morning. Exploring the unique challenges faced by men and women who carry out the daily televised ritual. Hey everybody, Elliot here today to share with you all my thoughts on the other big marquee show on Apple TV+, and that is The Morning Show, which has a pretty star-studded cast. We're going to talk about that cast, all the good, all the bad, and I'm going to let you know if this is something worth checking out. But before we get into all that, definitely consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell while you're at it. And also, if you've seen episodes 1, 2, and 3 of The Morning Show, definitely let me know what you thought of it in the comments section. Now, this will be a spoiler review, so if you haven't seen the episodes yet, Go check them out, come back. But if you've seen the first three episodes like I have, you're definitely in the right place. So before we get into my thoughts here, let's go over that cast one more time. You got Jennifer Aniston, Reese Witherspoon, Billy Crudup, uh, Mark Duplass, Gugu Mbathara, and Steve Corral, and many other great talents. Now, this show apparently has a, a $300 million price tag on it because of the season two has already been greenlit. And we're going to talk about that. This show is worth that big price tag. But um, going over the first three episodes, again, the situation is you have uh, Steve Corral playing Mitch and you have uh, Jennifer Aniston playing Alex. They've been co-hosts on this show for 15 years. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Steve Corral gets outed in the Me Too movement and has been called out for sexual misconduct. And that's kind of how the show starts off. Within the first 20 minutes, we're seeing this fast-paced, fast-cut, you know, kind of Aaron Sporkin type of uh, uh, dialogue, quick-cutting type of situation because it's chaotic right now. And that's because of the situation that everyone's in. No one expected this to come out. At least so far, no one's expected this to come out. We might learn some more about it later in the season, but everyone's kind of on a on a on a on a breakneck type of schedule, you know, Alex is really kind of depleted within this first episode. She's kind of just you know doesn't know what to do because her her friend who she thought she knew uh, you know has been outed, and we find out some very interesting reveals about Alex and Mitch's relationship that they have kind of had an affair once or twice. Uh, we find out about that. We also meet you know in the midst of all this chaos. We meet our uh, Reese Witherspoon character playing Bradley, who's this firecracker of a character who's from Virginia, who's kind of bounces around from uh, network to network because of her personality. She's very uh, honest, very wants to speak the truth. We see that from her video that goes viral. And, you know, so far, you know, I'm loving what we're getting in this first episode. Minus one little criticism. And I know she has it in her. Weath Witherspoon is from Virginia, and she has this accent, but it's like cutting in and out. I don't know, the, by episode two and three, the accent's like completely gone at that point, but it's just a little little thing I noticed. But anyway, I'm really enjoying the performances that we get from the first episode, and, and again, it establishes the storyline that we're walking into in this series. So again, I thought episode one did a really good job of establishing the situation, the tension that Alex has with, with the executives, with her new contract coming up and expiring, and her trying to get more perks with her deal, and her looking at herself as as the main kind of the, the main thing that's keeping this show afloat and then we get the introduction of Alex and how she's going to fit into that equation so transitioning into episode two this is where Corey played by uh uh, Billy Crudup is the VP or the vice president or the actual president of the network and he sees this viral video and he wants to inject something new to this show because they want to cut ties with Alice's character uh, because they feel like she doesn't have the spark anymore like she used to especially with this a whole Me Too movie with, with Mitch. So Corey has Bradley meet with uh, Mark Duplass character Charlie who's the executive producer of the show and that interview goes terrible. We see how that plays out. You know we also again this show hasn't really touched within the first few episodes we've We've seen Steve Corral, but as you notice, it says and Steve Corral in the title card and the trailers and all that stuff. And he kind of is playing the back seat. And I'm, it's really interesting to see how the show is kind of handling the Me Too movement. Again, this kind of parallels the true events in our real life with, you know, someone like Mike La uh, Laura and uh, um, uh, what's his name? Charlie Rose. Kind of that situation. Again, I don't watch the news. I try to stay away from all that kind of stuff. But I do uh, I'm not saying I dismiss the Me Too movement. I just don't pay attention to, to those particular storylines. But it kind of shows, it kind of parallels what we're getting with Steve Carell's character. You know, he's being accused of this stuff and he's kind of the American dad as far as the show goes. But in the midst of all this, he loses his wife, he loses his job obviously, and loses a lot of relationships. So it's really interesting how this show's kind of handling that. that he's 
kind of on the back burner. And we're getting some interesting scenes through him, but we haven't gotten a lot of Steve Corral. I'm looking forward to see how they handle the situation because by definitely, and we'll talk a little bit about it in a second here, episode three, we see him kind of doing a little bit of a switch. But you know, in the midst of episode two, obviously the big kind of mic drop moment was when Alex is getting her reward or her reward for being a journalist and being, you know, a top co-host. And she announces, you know, uh, catches everyone by surprise. She announces Bradley as her co-host. And that was a really good ending there, kind of a mic drop moment and really good performance at that moment as well. So episode three, as we kind of re recap these first three episodes, does a good job of kind of showing the aftermath of the announcement of, um, you know, Bradley joining the team. We see how they're trying to prep her, get in the outfits we're getting more of um you know um alex kind of taking more power and kind of setting her own destiny within these executives and, and kind of making calling her own shots we see more people kind of get into the supporting cast we're getting an accuser on the show pretty soon as far as speaking her truth we're getting things with um some of the other supporting cast members being upset about Bradley being a co-host. So it's a lot of good storylines going on so far. But one of the more interesting scenes that I really liked, and this is where the show kind of is trying to find its tone. Sometimes it's serious, sometimes it's dramatic. But in this particular moment in episode three, we get Steve Corral, Mitch, talking to Martin Short, who's like a director who's been caught in this Me Too movement. And it's a really interesting conversation they have because Martin Short says something about, you know, a young lady came out and accused him of rape and he how he kind of put that on the back burner. And Steve Corral is kind of having a conversation like, you know, I'm not you, you know, and it was, that was a really interesting dynamic. That's when I'm really kind of interested to see how the show handles that topic because it is a very important topic and a very sensitive topic. This show is not for everyone because it is so far to the show. So so as far as where we're at in the show, it's very one-sided, and we really haven't gotten Steve Corral's story. So it'll be interesting to see how they kind of balance that that uh, that storyline there. But very interesting so far. I'm really enjoying the performances. You know, Jennifer Aniston, haven't seen her great, this great in years. She's really given her all in this performance. Same goes with Reese Witherspoon. Again, I'm loving her feistiness and just not taking no for an answer and, and not just saying yes as an answer as well. So I'm liking her dynamic. Again, Steve Corral, I'm a big fan of his. I'm liking the limited amount of screen time he's gotten. I'm I'm really liking his performance so far. Billy Crudup, I think, has been really kind of snarky and, and making up schemes behind the scenes. Mark Duplass has been pretty great. And, and everyone involved has been really solid. So, again, coming from someone that's not really into that, the new stuff and all that good stuff, or, or to say not good stuff because some people don't like the news, but this show has really kind of caught my interest. This is really uh, intriguing, really good, well-written dialogue. As far as criticisms go, I do feel like – we haven't gotten the most out of the characters. Like, we see a little bit about Jennifer Aniston and her husband. We don't really know too much about Reese Witherspoon's family. We know that her brother's an addict and her mom and how they handle that. But we really haven't gotten to know these characters because the show is just really kind of focusing on the news-making aspect and the Me Too stuff. But they really haven't developed the characters too well. So I really would like to dive more into the characters, and that's probably my biggest criticism so far. But besides that, it's a really entertaining show, uh, a show that is clever at times, funny at times, as well as has some really good dramatic moments. So I recommend you all check it out. And when you do, let me know what you thought of it in the comment section. Give this video a thumbs up, share this video. And like I said, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and check out our other review that we did for C. I will be checking out some other uh, shows that they have on Apple Plus. So keep an eye out for that. Check out all of our content as far as uh, videos with movie reviews as well. We did some stuff for Netflix. So definitely got a lot of fun stuff for you all. So subscribe to our channel, follow us on all of our social media accounts. Thank you for watching this review. We'll see you in the next video.